Hello, this is Sarah Kite with UT Extension here in McMinn County, and I hope you are enjoying our home food preservation series this week. Today, we're going to talk about pickling and how to do the perfect pickling. So I will get started and share my screen with you. Pickling, I don't know what you like to pickle, but you don't have to just pickle cucumbers. We've got pickling of many things. And so today we're gonna to talk about how to do that safely. So we're gonna focus on the basics of preparing and processing whatever you're pickling and talk about the difference between pickled products and fermented and the different types of ingredients that you can use as well. So a little science lesson of why we want to process our pickles the correct way. We want to avoid molds and yeast and bacteria growing in our jars. So botulism is a very common one. If you don't process your foods, your home canned foods correctly. Um, one thing about botulism is that it likes to grow in a vacuum, which is what's created when you can foods at home, you drive off the oxygen. It also grows in foods with less acidity. It doesn't grow where there's a lot of acid in food. So don't leave out your vinegar and don't make your own vinegar and have not enough acid because it will really cause a problem. Also, uh, botulism grows at room temperature, which is not a problem if we refrigerate our foods or freeze them, but in home canning, we put them up in the pantry. So it's very important to follow a good tested recipe, to follow all the instructions well to make sure that you don't have botulism growing in your jars. High acid foods, um, such as jams, jellies, and pickles, have acid in them. And we don't have to worry as much if we follow a tested recipe about botulism growing. So good news, follow your recipes. Um, an exception to these, this rule would be your figs and tomatoes. You have to add acid to those, like lemon juice or vinegar, and then water back them. So in pickling, we like to use the water bath canner to kill our microorganisms that cause spoilage. The water bath canner process, it gets up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and that temperature um, will kill the most harmful microorganisms that would be growing in your pickles. So always follow the tested recipe and use the correct size jar that your recipe calls for. So unfortunately not recommended for pickling is the open kettle method. Either is the oven or dishwasher canning method that you might hear about. Rolling water canners should be large enough that when you fill them with water two inches above the top of the jars, that they'll not boil over. And you'll need a rack at the bottom so the jars do not rest directly on the heat surface. Make sure that you fill your jars with enough water to cover the tops one to two inches. So water bath canning, once you put your jars in there, you want to get a ruler out and measure one and two inches above the jar lid, and you always want to have that water covering the jar. So as you pick out your water bath canner, keep that in mind. There's also atmospheric steam canners that are safe for canning. And in these canners, the water is added at the bottom of the pot until it reaches the bottom of the rack. And then the jars are placed in the rack, the lid is closed, the water is heated up to boiling. And there's a dial at the top that indicates the temperature range that you need to maintain for processing. The advantage, advantage of these canners is that you don't need to have a lot of quantity of heated water. This advantage is that you'll have to monitor the water level recipes with longer processing times to make sure you have enough water in there to have your steam. So what's a tested recipe? The National Center for Home Food Preservation, I'll put the link on there for you. Um, you can use that, UT, we've got recipes, Ball has recipes, USDA has recipes. A tested recipe is one that's tested for the safety. They check what's growing in that liquid after days, years, and the testing of recipes is different from us testing our own recipes. When we refer to tested recipes in canning, we mean they have been tested in a laboratory to be sure that microorganisms will not grow when they're stored in your cabinet for weeks, months. So follow those good tested recipes. So this is important when you're making your pickled products. It's tempting to try pickle recipes that you see in magazines or blogs, but be careful. The level of acidity in a pickled product is extremely important to the taste, texture, and the safety. Don't alter the vinegar or the food or the water proportions in your recipe. Use only recipes with tested proportions in your ingredients. We're not scientists, so the right proportions to get the right product and to be safe have already been determined for us. There must be a minimum uniform level of acid throughout the mixed product to prevent the growth of bacteria. It's so very important. There's a variety though of pickled foods that you can use to be safe. Um, you can do green beans, fruits, relishes. There's some pictures there of some great pickled products. 
Uh, you might hear about fermentation. What's the difference between pickling and fermentation? So in pickling, you typically use an acid like vinegar to make your fruit or vegetable more acidic. But fermentation, you let the bacteria that produce acid grow to make the fruit or vegetable more acidic. This is done with salt. Salt not only draws water out of the produce, but also prevents bacteria that you don't want to grow. Brined or fermented pickles. So regular dill pickles and sauerkraut are fermented and they're cured for about three weeks. Refrigerator dills are fermented for about one week. During the time they go through the process of curing, colors and flavors change and their acidity increases due to the production of lactic acid by the bacteria. And some products are brined in salt and water and are cured to reduce the color and flavor changes but are fermented. In this case, vinegar is added later to preserve that food. So very interesting. So what do you want? Fresh pack or quick pack pickles? Um, they're not fermented. The produce is covered with vinegar and seasonings, then processed in a boiling water bath canner. Even though they're not fermented in some recipes, the produce might be brought in a solution of water and salt for several hours or overnight, and then drain and cover with the vinegar and seasoning. So follow the recipe, find a recipe that you like. So two different ways that you can increase the acid. Um, one way is by creating conditions where lactic acid producing bacteria will grow, which is called fermentation. The other is adding, adding vinegar, which we call pickle. Fruit pickles, do you like fruit pickles? Um, usually are prepared by heating the fruit and then seasoning the syrup and adding acid like lemon juice or vinegar to it. Also there's relishes. They're made from chopping fruits and vegetables that are cooked with seasonings and vinegar. There's different types of equipment that you want to make sure that you know what to use and what not to use to get a good pickle. Pickling liquid should be heated in a stainless steel, aluminum, glass, or unchipped enamelware saucepan. Do not use these. Do not use copper. Do not use brass. Do not use galvanized or iron utensils. These metals react with the acids and the salts and can cause undesirable color changes in the pickle. Sometimes I get a call that my pickles are turning purple or blue or they're mushy. And it could be because some of this equipment has been used and the metals are reacting with the acids. Short-term brining or soaking, you can use a crock, a saucepan, a bowl made from stoneware or glass, stainless steel, aluminum, unchipped enamelware. You can use these same containers when you are soaking cucumbers in lime, except for aluminum. The lime will cause aluminum to fit, and when this happens, your container might develop denser depressions. So let's talk a few minutes about the ingredients that you might use for pickling. So the basic ingredients are shown here. Your produce, your salt, your sugar, your vinegar, your herbs, and your water. So what kind of pickle do you need? There's actually different types of pickles. Many kinds of fruit and vegetables can be pickled. So cucumbers, you have three cucumbers there. Which one do you use? A slicing cucumber? No, use a good slicing cucumber. It'll get a nice slimy, pickle. Uh, regular cucumbers are grown fresh, ready to eat fresh, and they have a little bit of wax on them, which is good for pickling or pickling solution. It's tough to get through that cucumber. And they're also too large. You might have large seeds and large um, seed cavities, which aren't really good for pickling. The middle one is our pickling cucumber, and then the last one's an English cucumber. So the English cucumber is also known as a burpless variety. They have a sweeter and a thinner skin. They're um, easy to digest. They nearly are seedless and delicate, but not really the best for pickling. The middle is the best one for pickling. A pickling cucumber shorter, it's thicker, they come in different sizes. They have smaller seeds, smaller seed cavities. They have bumpy skin and are very, importantly, they're not waxed. So all your seasonings and acidity can get through there. So you have different types of pickles. You want to get your pickling cucumbers. Try to pickle fruits and vegetables within 24 hours after they're picked. Vegetables should be tender, fruit should be firm, peaches and pears can be slightly underripe for pickling. Produce should not have mold, not even a small amount. Processing will destroy the mold but not destroy the off flavor that it produces that it, while it's growing on the fruit or produce. Salt. Salt's very important. Find the proper salt. Do you want to use canning or pickling salt? Fermented and non-fermented pickles may be safely made using iodized or non-iodized salt. However, 
non-caking material add, add it to the table salts and make your brine cloudy. But use a good canning or pickling salt. White sugar is preferred. White sugar produces a less um, lighter colored product. Unless the recipe calls for a sugar substitute, use regular sugar. Heat and storage can cause bitterness and loss of flavor if you use the sugar substitutes. Um, sugar also helps pump the pickles and keep them firm. So if you need a special recipe with reduced sugar or a sugar substitute, you'll need to find those. Vinegar is very important for pickling. You want to use a vinegar with at least 5% acidity. Um, don't use homemade vinegars unless you know that it's at least 5% acidic. And do not dilute unless the recipe tells you to. The dilute, this dilutes the preservative effect. White vinegar is the best, um, especially with your onions involved. But some people like the flavor of apple cider vinegar. They like the milder taste. Your spices, very important part of pickling. Um, you can put them in a nice clean white cloth or cheesecloth, whole spice is good, and remove the bag from the product before packing the jars. And this will produce a lighter color pickled product. The water, who <laughs> thought the water would also play into it? So it's like a lot of great ingredients, but you gotta make sure that you use the good quality ingredients and a good quality pickle at the end. So um, with pickling, especially fermenting pickles, avoid heavily chlorinated water, which can kill microorganisms and inhibit the fermentation. Sometimes water with high levels of minerals can produce dark or discolored pickles. So soft water is the best choice. All right, here's your beautiful pickle. His little science anatomy for pickles. Most people prefer a plump or firm pickle. And there are some things you can do for a better quality pickle. First, be sure you start with the right cucumber. Start with a fresh pickling cucumber that's not overly mature. Remove a scar though at the end, the 1 16th slicing the blossom end is. The blossoms may contain an enzyme which causes excessive softening for your pickle. And you don't need to use a grape leaf which inhibits the enzyme if you slice the blossom end off. And there it is. Covering the cucumbers with cubed or crushed ice 45 hours before pickling can help to make them crisper. And this is a safer method than using some firming agents. And here's a list of some safe firming agents. If you use a good quality ingredient, up-to-date methods, firming agents won't be needed for crystals. Potassium aluminum sulfate. Uh, it's um, a good additive that some people like to use to help uh, create a crisp pickle. It may be safely used to firm fermented pickles. However, it's not necessary and it's not included in many USDA tested recipes. It does not improve the firmness of quick processed pickles either. Calcium, pickling lime, yes. Agriculture lime, no. So make sure you use a food grade lime if you're adding it. And it might improve pickle firmness. You would just before choose a good, great food grade lime. There's also pickle crisp granules, which have calcium, are also made. Um, add granules to filled jars just before applying the lids. So when using lime, it's important to remove excess lime absorbed by the cucumbers to make it safe for pickles. To do this, you want to drain the lime water solution, rinse it, then re-soak the cucumbers for about an hour, and repeat rinsing and soaking two or three more times. Um, this is not used in a lot of recipes, but just to educate you, you might, have, you might hear of low temperature pasteurization. There's a treatment that's out there that some people use. It results in a better product texture, but must be managed carefully to avoid possible spoilage. You just simply place your jars in a can filled halfway with warm water, 140 degrees, then add the hot water to one inch above the jars. Heat them to maintain 185 degree temperature for 30 minutes. Check with the jelly or canning thermometer to make sure the temperature is maintained for 30 minutes. Temperatures higher than 185 may cause unnecessary softening. So remember, only do this if your recipe calls for it. So let's talk about the step by steps of how to do some pickling. Um, get your equipment ready, fill your can, there's a picture there of a canner, fill it with water. Um, you want to get it nice and hot, it takes a while, so get it started, bring it to a nice boil. You also want to get your jars ready by washing them and sterilize your jars by putting them in your boiling water for about 10 minutes. If you don't plan to process them, um, you want to make sure that they stay sterilized. And make sure you use a good two-piece lid, the lid in your ring. Always start with a good produce, a good pickle, want to wash it, cut off that blossom end, one sixteenth of an inch off that end. Um, you cut them into slices if you prefer. 
Combine your cucumbers and your onions, a large bowl, add your salt, cover about two inches with crushed or cubed ice, refrigerate for three to four hours. Next, combine your vinegar, sugar, mustard, seed, celery seed, um, boil for 10 minutes, strain, add your cucumbers, onions, and vinegar solution, then keep on boiling. Next, you need to fill your jars with your, your pickles and your onions, your pickle solution, leave about a half inch head space. Remove any air bubbles, add more cucumber solution if you need to to get the half inch head space. No more, no less. It's very important for your proper sealing. Wipe the rooms with a damp cloth. Make sure there's no food particles or sticky solution on there so that way you get a good solid seal. seal. Open the lids, adjust finger tip tight. Then you want to put them in your jar. You put your jars with the lids on in your canner. Turn the heat to the position, return that water to boiling. Make sure you get your ruler out. You need to get one to two inches of water above the lids. After you get a boil, put the lid on the canner, process it for the appropriate time. When it's done, lift the jars out, put on a nice cooling rack, and let them sit undisturbed for about 24 hours. Again, make sure you know your altitude in McMinn County. We're below 1,000 feet, so we're good. Don't need to adjust your processing time. I'll share this recipe with you. This is one of my favorites. It's a quick, fresh pack bread and butter pickle. Makes about eight pints. You need your pickling cucumbers, about six pounds, eight cups of onions, thinly sliced, pickling salt, some vinegar, sugar, mustard seed, you have your spices there. And then what you want to do is wash your cucumbers. Again, cut the 1 16th of Wasserman off. And then you put on your cucumbers, onions, a large bowl, add your salt, cover with two inches of ice, refrigerate three to four hours, and more ice if you need to, you want to keep them covered. Then keep on many ingredients, so a large pot, and then you just want to boil it for about 10 minutes, cooking it all together, drain, add your cucumbers, onions, slowly reheat the bowl. Then fill your hot jars that you've been sterilized with your glasses and your syrup, keep a half inch headspace, remove air bubbles. Slap your rims, and then you want to process. There at the bottom is your chart for pints or quarts processed for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes of boiling in that water bath, you take them out, let them cool. You don't move them for 24 hours. Uh, if you like a good firm pickle, here's a little bit of variation. Again, wash them, cut them, mix a cup of pickle lime with salt to gallon of water, um, avoid aluminum again, and then just soak your cucumbers for 24 hours. You can stir them and remove it, rinse it, re soak it for an hour. And repeat that until, um, repeat rinsing and soaking sets about two more times. And then as slices will be brittle, you want to just drain it well, and then you can go ahead and add your onions. And then storage is very important too. About four to five weeks, let all the seasonings to infuse in the foods. So again, store them in a cool place, no direct sunlight, no direct heat, and enjoy whatever you're pickling. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, pickling session. Tomorrow we'll be going into salsa. Lots of tomatoes are out there today. Um, but have a fantastic day and enjoy your camp. This is Sarah Cott with YouTube Extension in Ming County, and I hope you have a fantastic day.